Hello there guys, Blair Harrison aka Harrison Productions here and today we're going to look at a video on this little guitar. Well shall I say big guitar? This is the Epiphone Firebird. The Firebird, an interesting guitar in Gibson's history. It is either loved by many guitar players and is also loathed by many guitar players. Now, the Gibson Firebird was first introduced in 1964. It was basically Gibson's answer to the Stratocaster. And interestingly, it was designed by, of all people, a car mechanic, but it gave it its unique design. And it's also the guitar that introduced uh, a unique set of pickups, which are the Firebird pickups. Now, there are actually four different models. There's the Firebird 1, which has one pickup, the Firebird 3 and 5, which has two, and then you got the Firebird 7, which has three. Now, you're probably thinking, where's two and three? It turns out they actually use those numbers for their bases. Yeah, I don't know, the numbering's a bit strange, but just go along with the flow, will you? Now I've had this Epiphone Firebird for almost a year now. Um, I bought this guitar on, I think it was possibly the 4th or the 5th of January 2023. So the reason I got fascinated with this guitar was actually two reasons. The first one was when I saw the band Roxy Music played the 50th anniversary tour at the Glasgow Hydro on October 2022. So the guitar that stood out to me was Phil Manzanera's 1964 Gibson Firebird Mark VII. And as if it wasn't enough for me being obsessed with that guitar, another guitar YouTuber decided to make a video about a Firebird, Ramon Goose, who you probably all know best from his YouTube channel, The Guitar Show. I think it was in October, November of that year, he bought what was a ESP Firebird guitar. And it was very rare because I think it only came out like, what was it? Only one year, 1995, and then they never done it again. So that got me fascinated with the Firebird. So I thought, <sighs> got to get a Firebird. Got to, because it's calling to me. Now I had two options. There was the Epiphone that was released a couple of years ago. And then there was the Tokai.
this is a really playable guitar. Now, the shape, yeah, let's talk about the shape. A lot of people, when they see this guitar, they'll probably think, oh god, that looks like it's impossible to play. But actually, I don't really notice it. I mean, I thought that was kind of my fear when I tried it in the Guitar Guitar Shop in Glasgow. I thought, oh no, is this thing going to neck dive or something? Because I've had that with SGs where they always neck dive. But this was actually not bad. I think if you just get used to the shape and set a certain way, maybe just get a good strap, you'd be fine. But if it doesn't, then it's probably just not the guitar for you. So, But I found it really comfortable. The neck is really nice. Because I've had one Epiphone in my life, and that's uh, an SG I've got. It's a good instrument, but it's always been let down by the nut. And I've got to say, Epiphone has really improved the quality control, uh, design-wise of that, with the nut, really good nut. And uh, let's talk about the, the pickups. These are Firebird pickups. Now, the first time I've seen these pickups, they've often been misnamed as Mini Humbuckers. Well, not really. They're, more, they're called Firebird pickups, and they're, they're quite different from Mini Humbuckers, because Mini Humbuckers is just, it's just a Mini Humbucker. It's a bit warmer feel. It's got a bit of edge to it, but it's mainly a warmer feel guitar pickups. These pickups are great for soloing, and I've got to say, it's just, it works really well with um, dry pedals, honestly as you hear in the examples right now. So what's the only thing I don't like? It's mainly two things I don't like. First off, the electronics are not the best. This is the same problem I've always said with Squire guitars. The electronics let it down a bit. Now, I will say, compared to Squire guitars, especially on like the Mustang or Offset guitars, at least the pickups are actually stronger, especially the bridge one. The bridge is actually not bad, it's strong enough, but then if you want a bit more drive in that, you have to really turn the volume up to about 10, which I don't really like to be honest. I like to kind of keep it under like 5 or 7. But I think it's just because it's in the quote unquote vintage line, they probably just put low output pickups, which I don't like. I wish they were a bit more but then obviously the problem would be the price they have to put more money into it so i would recommend if you're getting this guitar and if you don't mind the pickups on it you'll get on fine but if, if you want a bit more you might want to save a bit of money and get i don't know a seymour duncan and another thing is strings uh gauge i would recommend that you play this guitar with 10 gauge strings Anything under, you're going to have a bad time because one thing I don't like about this is mainly the placement of the high E string. And yeah, I think that's another thing. I don't know what it is. It's just, I think the placement they have it here, it's not strong enough, it's, you know, because I've had this where I've done rehearsals where I can get through a song about, I don't know, maybe four or five songs all right. But then, when you get to one particular song where you play hard, the e, the high E string would always snap off, which annoys me. So I'm always having to keep changing the strings. That's my only real complaint, is just watch out with the strings. And also, just kind of be careful how you're hitting the strings sometimes. Because uh, it does snap off. So I recommend maybe getting a bit more higher gauge strings. Just a possibility. Oh, another net, uh, net pick I've got is um, just the size of it. It's it's a big guitar because of this headstock. 
it's a bit big, so you will have problems if you're on like very small stages. So especially if some like Glasgow where they got a daft pillar thing like blocking or it's like really tiny. So I would recommend uh, just watching it when playing live. But apart from that, it's a good guitar, and it's actually kind of become it's it's actually become my go-to guitar because kind of similar to what I've said about uh, a Mustang guitar, which will be a video that will be released whenever in the year. It's reliable, and you can get more out of it compared to Strats. And also, I'd say probably more than humbuckers now humbuckers are great if you want a more warm darker sound or if you just want to sound like that band with the singer f who sounds like um yusami sam what's his name james hetfield from metallica you know that's good but if you're somebody like me who wants a bit more bitiness from when the solo win or you know chugging Firebird pickups, this will do. And it's just, it's a unique shape. I mean, you know, it, it will be uh, great on stage and make you stand out more if you don't want to be that player who mainly plays like Strats, Telecasters, Les Pauls, and sometimes SGs, or even an offset guitar like a Jazzmaster or something. If you want to stand out a bit more, this will do. Uh, but... And it's just uh, it's a good guitar. It could do both clean and it can do good dry pedals, which I like. Uh, you know, there are some guitars that can usually do one half or the other, but this this is one of those guitars where it can do both. And it's no wonder why it was popular with some other players like um, Eddie Chank Willis, the renowned session guitarist for Motown, uh, Stephen Stills and Crosby Stills and Nash. And uh, everyone's favourite racist blues guitarist, uh, Eric Clapton, even loved the Firebird. He had a Firebird Mark I during Cream. I think it might have been hard on the Wheels of Fire album. Because uh, it was the guitar to go to after his um, Phil SG. So it's often been the guitar that's in between the Phil SG and the ES-335 guitar. And apparently, from what some fans say, apparently it was his best tone he ever got was with a Firebird. But, you know, I better watch it in case the Clapton fans come over with the pitchforks to tell me what, uh, how wrong I am with that. Uh, but aside from that, aside from the jokes, really underrated guitar. I would recommend trying it out just to see if you like the shape or not. Because uh, honestly, it's a really good gem of a guitar. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. And I'll see you next time for another video. Take care, our folks.